okay, I'm Cat and I play Red. With everything that's going on, conventions are out the window. So normally I'd be super prepared, I'd have all my lists for Essence, I'd, I'd have my floor plans, quickest way round, none of that this year. But what I have got for you is my list of things to look out for at Spiel Digital. Now, some of these are things that are planned releases. Um, they'll be available on Tabletopia or Board Game Arena or Tabletop Simulator over the course of the long weekend. Some of them are things that are coming out now and some of them are things that will be out at the end of the year. Okay, I feel like I'm on Jack and Ori. I've got my cup of tea, I've got my book and I've got my slippers on. Um, but let's have a look at what is coming up at Spill Digital. So this is in no real order. This is my brain scrambling stuff onto a page. The first thing we've got is Novgorod. Um, this is by Stefan Reist House, published by Ostia Spill. This is one of the small card games of his, like Riga and Santa Maria. Um, you're going to be building contours or trading offices, um, shipping goods, manufacturing luxury products to fulfill mission and gain points. Um, Stefan Reisthaus did Arkwright, as you may know. Um, Arkwright, the card game, is also going to be around during Spiel Digital. Um, that's just finished on Kickstarter from Game Brewer. Um, we've got a video for that. You should go and watch that. Next up is Holy Festival of Colours, designed by Julio Nazrio and published by Floodgate Games. Players are celebrating the end of winter and spreading colourful powder on each other in order to bring good luck for the new year. Um, it's a bit of an abstract one from what I can gather this. You'll have colour cards and you decide which to play and that determines the pattern of how the colour powder falls on the board. Um, there's a bit of area control, pattern building, looks lovely. Check that out. The next one I think is not going to be a surprise to anyone that knows me. Cloud Age by Alexander Pfister, one of my favourite designers of recent years. This is being published by DLP, I think, in Europe and Capstone in America. Set in a dark dystopian world, because we need more of that right now, it has an innovative card sleeving system that helps you gather resources. You're then going to use those resources to upgrade airships, recruit new crew members for your airships. Um, this is a campaign style game, similar to Maracaibo and Expedition to New Dale, I'm assuming. Um, apparently you can either play it through the campaign or you can choose to play a specific scenario as one game. I think the complexity goes up later in the campaign, I think you sort of learn more as you play. We'll learn more as more details come out. Next we have Monasterium, designed by Ave de Furla. Again, it's from DLP. Um, players are the dean of a cathedral school. Using a worker placement mechanic, you're going to send your students out um, you're going to build stained glass to increase the fame of your cathedral uh, for film missions played over three years. So presumably three eras. That one I'm going to come back to. Ooh, are you interested? That one I'm going to come back to as well. Right, uh, next is Halito, Uwe Rosenberg, Lookout Games. Now, I am really excited about this. 
I love Caverna, I love Agricola, I love Glass Road, I love old school Uwe Rosenberg games. I'm not a fan of the polyomino stuff. Sorry Uwe if you're watching. But this is all a set in Bavaria, it's all about hop growing, worker placement with a thematic implementation of the two field crop rotation scheme which if you went to school in the UK you'll know all about crop rotation and you'll have a little bit of an advantage there. I want that. Then this is like a double whammy. Exit Cemetery of the Night and Exit Enchanted Forest by Moxon Inca Brand published by Cosmos. Um, Cemetery of the Night is a three star difficulty which I think is our preferred one. I think the fours just get a bit too much for us. Um, you're trying to find the priceless red ruby in the tomb of Sir Reginald Reston. It's a red ruby, I need it. Enchanted Forest, two star. They're nice when you want it a bit easier. Um, a walk in the forest turns surreal as you meet strange fairy tale creatures and strange puzzles. We love the exit games. I miss them. I think we've still got a couple of this year's releases to play, but if we play them without the other half of our gaming group. And um, let's have a look. Right, the Hansa Teutonica big box. Hansa Teutonica is an old school staple uh, designed by Andreas Steeding. This is released by Pegasus Spiel. If you haven't played Hansa, you should. Simple as that. This is one box that's going to have the base game and all the expansions in it. Um, Hansa is a really solid game. Two actions per turn. You can block people, bump them off the board. Sometimes that's a good thing. Use it to your advantage if you can. Um, root building, tech trees, area majority. It's great, you should look at it. The initial prices on the big box are really good as well. I know, I've seen it, I think Miniature Market had it, $35, bargain. Something a bit lighter, Meeple Land from, oh my goodness, I can't read my own writing. Cyril Allard, sorry Cyril, Cyril Allard, by Blue Orange Games. Blue Orange make a lot of fun games. They tend to be the simpler end of things, um, but stuff like Planet and Photosynthesis are just great games for when you've got a bit less time or, you know, if you have someone's kids over or whatever. Meeple Land looks similar to those, but you're building an amusement park. I love theme parks. Tile placement. Um, if you don't please your visitors, you're going to get negative points. Um, looks lovely, really pretty. Right, more names I'm going to struggle with now, I'm afraid. Right, next up is the Magnificent Snur, I think. I hope I've got my pronunciation even close. Designed by Eilid Svensson and Christian Erstby. And... Published by A. Porter or Matagot. We love the Magnificent. It is magnificent. Um, we've done a 10 minute teach, so check that out. See if you need the expansion. You do. This expansion takes it to five players. It adds a new performer with snow and ice themed tricks. There's some new trainer tiles. There's also apparently a board module that's going to give you some special actions that you can play with or without. Super excited. The Magnificent is great. And then we're looking at the Red Cathedral, designed by Israel Sendrero and Sheila Santos and published by Devere. You're part of a construction team trying to build some Basils in Moscow at the instruction of Ivan the Terrible. You're going to have three actions a turn to choose from, that's it. You're going to assign a section, 
send resources to a section or gain resources. Um, when you finish a particular section, you're going to get some points. Um, overall area majority bonus at the end looks lovely. And, right, I'm going to go back to that one as well. Carnegie um, by Xavier George. Art by Ian O'Toole. Published by Quind Games. Now, I found out something interesting today. Uh, Mr. Carnegie was born in Scotland, moved to the US with his parents, became a US steel entrepreneur, who in 1919, when he died, donated $350 million to stuff. Amazing. I love the fact that games teach us this without actually teaching. It's good. So in Carnegie, you're going to be recruiting and managing employees to expand your business, make more money. Um, there's end game bonuses, action retrieval, everything about this I love. The art is gorgeous, very reminiscent of high society, um, even though obviously it's not the same artist. Love Quinn Games, love finding out about Mr. Carnegie. Then, the last thing on this list is a bit of a mystery. On the Essen Spiel list, there is a listing for a game called Oz. Designed by Oscar Aravab and published by Gen X Games. Now, Oz is an American TV series. Um, it ran between 1997 and 2003, and it's a hyper-violent prison drama. I can't find anything out about this game. I need to know about this game. How you're going to implement any of the things that happened in Oz into a board game, I have no idea. But if they do, I suspect it's going to be quite dark, which we like. Um, I'm trying to find out more about that. Um, hopefully I'll be able to come back to you about that. Then, weird honorary mentions. Oh no, no. Oh, one more. One more. Quacks of Quedlinburg. Great game. I bought it a couple of years ago based on the fact it won the Kennisville. Now, honestly, it was nowhere near as strategic a game as I was expecting. But it's a lot of fun. I love Push Your Luck games. Designed by Wolfgang Varsch. Produced um, by Schmidt Spiel. This is only available in German at the moment. But most it's mostly language dependent. The, or the base games are. So I'm hoping this will be. This is going to introduce nightmares, obsession and hysteria. There's going to be new labs to distill essences to cure your villagers of, of these illnesses. So that sounds like a lot of fun. Right, now, stuff that is on the Essen list, but we know is on the way to us. So hopefully the stuff I'm going to talk about now is stuff that we'll be covering in the very near future. So, New York Zoo. Uwe Rosenberg, produced by Capstone. Now, this is a polyomino Uwe, which, as I said earlier, I'm not a fan of. But it's also about animal breeding, which, if you think about it, he does quite well. So, you're going to place a tile or breed animals in your turn. You need to decide when to do which action. Um, we actually jumped on board a bulk deal for these. We got it at a bargain, so I couldn't resist it. The little animal meeples are adorable. We'll see, we'll see. Um, I, I'm more, I think I'm more looking forward to Halatu from Uve, but we'll, we'll try New York Zoo and we'll see. Ah, the next thing we're not gonna be covering because, shh, Pandemic Legacy Season Zero. Designed by Matt Leacock and published by Z-Man. 
Now, those of you in the US won't know this, but the UK Health Minister is actually called Matt Hancock. So day after day, we have Matt Hancock talking about the pandemic. And it's quite confusing, so I'm glad I got that right. Pandemic is designed by Matt Leacock, not Matt Hancock, the health minister. I don't like cooperative games. Got bored of Pandemic a long time ago. Really enjoyed Pandemic Legacy season one and two. So I'm looking forward to this. I think we enjoyed season one more than two, but we'll see what season zero has to offer. Obviously, with the two of us stuck indoors, we can sit and probably we'll play it in two, three days. It's fine. It's good. <laughs> um, something else we've got coming. Viscounts of the West Kingdoms. We love the show Philip Games. Um, the West Kingdom ones are my favourite, not only because the boxes are red. Um, I really enjoyed Architects. Put the video out for that last week. You should watch it. Really, really loved Paladins. Put the video out for that a few weeks ago. You should check that out. And we have Viscounts arriving very soon. I'm hopeful it will arrive this week um, and we can at least have a couple of plays. Um, but there will be a video for it coming soon. So keep an eye out for that. And I think that's it. She says, like 17 games, that's it. Those are our ones to watch for Essen Spiel Digital. Um, there's a lot of other stuff coming up. The new release list is changing daily. So probably between me writing this list and today, it's probably already changed. But have a look. Um, we have got a media portal. We've got loads of stuff we're in the process of putting up there. Um, hopefully I'll be able to give you the address for that soon. Um, we'll be at some tables, hopefully. This might be the first spiel that we actually get to play games at. Woo, exciting. Um, so if you see me at a table on Board Game Arena or Tabletopia or something, come and say hello. Hope there's some stuff that piques your interest in that. Um, like, subscribe, all that jazz. Come and say hello on socials, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter. Thanks for watching. Bye.